So what is server-side tracking? And well, many people have answered this question, but I find that the answers are often very abstract and therefore hard to follow, especially if you're not really familiar with the topic. So today I'm not going to tell you what server-side tracking is, I'm going to show you. Let's dive in. Hey, and welcome to the channel. My name is Leon. This channel exists to help you make better decisions in your daily work using your web stats. If you want to get started with server-side tracking and if you want to support the channel, there are affiliate links in the video description to a service called Stape.io. And I find that Stape.io is by far the easiest way to get started with server-side tracking. So I highly recommend them. If you click the affiliate links down below, you support the channel at no extra cost to you. So that's kind of a win-win for both of us. Also, I created a short cheat sheet on how to grow your website traffic. So if you want to grow the traffic that is coming to your site, check out the link in the description to get that cheat sheet for free. All right, with that out of the way, let's look at what is server-side tracking. And I want to answer that question by looking at the opposite of server-side tracking first, which is client-side tracking. And client-side tracking is a scenario that many of you are familiar with. I have prepared a very simple regular GTM container here that is called client-side tracking. And I want to show you how a client-side container behaves. And then I want to show you how a server-side container behaves. And I believe that will give a light bulb moment for many of you and where you finally understand what server-side tracking is. So we're going to take a little bit of a detour, but Please bear with me, I believe this is going to help you understand server-side tracking a lot better this way. So this is a client-side GTM container that many of you will be familiar with. It's very simple, I don't even have a cookie banner here, it's just GA4, Google Analytics. I have a config tag which is running on uh, initialization all pages and I have three event tags. One is for my main conversion, my contact form submit and I have a link click and a scroll event. So it's like really, really basic. And I want to hit preview mode and uh, let's open up my site in preview mode here. And I want to show you how this container behaves on my site because right now all tracking is done from my website directly into the servers of Google Analytics. I can show you that actually by right clicking on my website and I'm going to click inspect. And so please don't be intimidated by all the technical things that you see here. I will explain it really slowly and I believe this will make it a lot clearer actually for you. So I'm going to inspect my homepage and in this window there is a network tab. And in this network tab, and if I'm going to refresh my page real quick, in this network work tab it shows all the calls, so to speak, all the data that's being transferred from other servers or from my own service to my browser. So for instance, all the images and all the fonts that I'm using on my site are kind of transferred from a server for this page. So for instance, if I look for the fonts here on the site, I have all the fonts that I'm, I'm loading here and they're all loaded from my own domain because it's just from my own web server. And uh, another example would be images. So here are all the images that I'm using, for instance, the background image, so there is a preview. So this is the background image that's being loaded. And it's also loaded from my own domain because it's just an image from my own server. But then if I want to look up uh, Google Analytics and to see Google Analytics, you need to filter by the word collect. So this is the signal that happens from the browser to Google Analytics. That's just there to track that a visitor is viewing this page and um, it's requesting a URL. And if I look carefully here under domain, it says that it's transferring the data to not my own domain, but it's transferring data to the Google Analytics.com domain. So this is how client side tracking behaves. We're transferring data from our website, from the browser, the visitor's browser to that domain directly. And this is the reason that many of these calls, of many of these data transfers get lost because there are all kinds of tracking prevention things happening. So I have an ad blocker and this particular ad blocker doesn't block Google Analytics, but many of them do. There are other tracking prevention methods happening. For instance, the Safari browser is really known for this, that they will block or maybe limit the behavior of these kinds of trackers. So the situation that we want to have is that we want to load all our trackers not through a third-party domain like this, not for instance googleanalytics.com, but we want to load our trackers through our own domain. 
just like we are doing with our fonts and our images. They are all loaded from our own domain. And we want to do the same with Google Analytics. So how can we do this? Well, you probably feel this coming already, but we can achieve this through server-side tracking. And as an example, I've prepared a very simple GTM container. It's right here. So this is Google Tag Manager, the server-side version that is running on a server. And I've installed it on a state.io server. By the way, state.io, I find this the easiest way to get started with server-side tracking. So if you're interested, again, there's an affiliate link down below. And I will make tutorials later on how to set this up. So check the video description. I will create a playlist and all that if you're interested in that. But for this video, it's just an example. I'm not gonna explain in detail how to set this up. I just want to show you that this is running on my own domain. So um, if I hit preview, we will see a preview here on a.leonkortzeg.nl. So there's a trick that you can use to see if this is working by just typing in your domain and then press healthy. And then if it says, okay, then you know that the container is running smoothly. There is one simple change that we're gonna make to make sure that we're not tracking directly into Google servers, but to make sure that we're tracking into our own server-side container on our own domain. I'm gonna do that by going into my client-side container. And I know these two containers are like really similar. It might be a little bit hard to follow along, but right now I'm on the client side, like my regular GTM container. And I'm gonna open up my GA4 config tag. And um, if I press here, I can do some configuration here. And I'm gonna make one change that's gonna totally shift this whole setup into a server side setup. So I'm gonna add a server container URL parameter, and I'm gonna set the value to my domain. So it's https a.leonkortzweg.nl. I'm gonna save this. And because I'm doing this in the config tag, it will also, all the event tags will follow this same configuration, but this one line changes the entire setup into a server-side setup. The website looks the same. It doesn't feel really different, but if I press inspect again, and if I check out the network tab, and if I look up GA4 by typing collect, and I need to reload this. Yeah, there you go. You see that the data transfer is not directly with the Google Analytics servers, but it's happening through my domain. Well, I can take a look at the debug of my server container. And uh, we see here that there's a page view coming in and um, I'm running a Google tag here that makes sure that the, the incoming data is also sent to the Google servers. So instead of directly sending the data from the front end of the site to the Google servers, we're first sending it to our own server. And from this, we're sending it, kind of just forwarding it here to the Google Analytics servers again. So why would you do this? Well, if you look up this question on the internet, you will find that there are many reasons to implement server-side tracking. But I find that the primary reason for people to implement server-side tracking is that they are able to bypass some tracking prevention, to bypass some technological limitations when it comes to tracking. Because many people are using ad blockers or are using very strict browsers these days that, that kind of prevent us from tracking really accurately. And the primary reason for organizations to implement server-side tracking is to be able to track a little bit more accurate by bypassing all these tracking preventions. So for instance, your paid media campaigns are able to kind of link the clicks that people are doing a lot better with the conversions that people are doing. And therefore you can make better decisions on where to spend your ad budget. Also the reports that you have become a little bit more accurate. So it's easier to make better decisions uh, when the data is more accurate, of course. And a question that I get all the time is like, how much does the data improve? And uh, I must say that I need to work on a bit more like really benchmark numbers. I need to get a little bit more data to be able to say, okay, this is the average and this is the bandwidth. But like from my experience, when I look in accounts, I see like a conservative number would be an improvement of 30% in your ad data. And sometimes it's a little bit lower, but it's often a lot higher. So 30% better data, events that you would otherwise have missed, or like channels that you would otherwise 
would have missed. So that's kind of a rough number. I might get back on a separate video with a larger benchmark project if I have time and if you're interested in that. So a 30% improvement. I wanted to say that some people think that they don't need to ask for consent anymore if you're using server-side tracking. And that's a big misconception. You still need to ask for consent and it's not a way to bypass the law. You can bypass tracking prevention and technological limitations, but we cannot bypass the privacy regulations, obviously. Another question is, are there any downsides of using server-side tracking? Well, obviously the setup becomes a little bit more complex and just a regular client-side setup can already be very complex and chaotic. So for instance, you could have many tags, many different platforms that you're tracking into. I've seen uh, client containers with hundreds and hundreds of tags. And obviously if you're adding server-side tracking to that whole mix, the entire setup becomes just a lot more complex and harder to manage. So if you guys are interested in that, I'm planning on making follow-up tutorials on how to manage complexity in a server-side tracking setup. So if you're interested in that, please leave a comment down below. I always love to hear from you guys. Also, by using Stape, that is also a very good recommendation for managing complexity because if you don't use a program like Stape, you will find that the configuration of the server and also the maintenance of the server that's running server-side tracking takes a lot of work and also requires specific knowledge on how servers are built. And that is often not what we want to do. So by using Stape, you already lower the complexity of your setup. But I have to say, whatever you do, the setup will become a little bit more complex. So that's one of the downsides of server-side tracking. All right, that's it for today. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you learned something today. If you want to know more about server-side tracking, just follow this channel. I'm planning on making a lot more videos on this. If you're interested in server-side tracking or if you want to know something specific, if you have a specific question on server-side tracking, please leave a comment down below and I might include it in a follow-up video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.